We're in a high level category 3 laboratory, a containment level 3 laboratory, and um, I've just processed a flu specimen. The test that we do first is a test that detects the genes of influenza virus. That will tell you whether or not the patient has got flu. We not just find out whether it's positive or negative, it will tell you the kind of flu the patient has. We now have the genetic material purified from influenza virus. The influenza virus is an RNA virus. We actually need DNA for the PCR to work. So we're now doing a special step that will change RNA into DNA so we can then complete the genetic testing. The test that we use, called the polymerase chain reaction, detects influenza genetic material. But before we can detect that material, we have to actually get at it. And we do that by extracting nucleic acid from the virus. The virus actually resides in the cells, so we have to break open the cells to get at the nucleic acid. We now have our DNA, so we are ready to do the final step of detecting influenza virus in a polymerase chain reaction. Having set up the PCR plate, I have just uh, put the plate in a centrifuge and that mixes all the components of the reactions and it forces the mixtures down into the bottom of the tube. I'm now going to put this into the PCR machine. And here am I setting up the PCR machine. That will actually do the reaction for us. The PCR machine is very important. It's called a real-time PCR machine because as the results are coming off, we can see those results as a graph. So very strongly positive samples will be seen as a graph sooner and weaker samples will be seen coming off as a graph later. The real-time PCR is really quick. From sample receipt to export of result, we can do this in five hours.